Oh, wow. Troy, we see who got the looks in the family. Um, and so here we go. And the, uh, all right, we have a guest tonight, and uh, this is Lance Spradling. And uh, Lance, how are you doing? Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Doing just fine. All right, give me just a minute. I'm trying to do a little bit of adjusting. Now, um, for those that haven't put the connection together, we have two Spradlings in the house tonight. Uh, and so uh, go ahead, Troy. I'm going to let you introduce our, our, our guest a little bit. Okay. Lance Spradlin is my little brother I, I say little brother he's actually taller than i am he's bigger than i am uh and he is uh, a bigger personality than i am i would even say but, oh really uh, <laughs> lance uh works for uh devon energy or has been working for devon energy he is and that's a an oil field company and he's been with them for quite some time he has a lovely family of three children uh, two of those children are grown and out of the house. He actually has two grandchildren. Uh, and then the thing about Lance and the reason we had him on this show is, or want to invite him on this show is because Lance is also a preacher. Uh, he is full time in his career, but he dedicates a lot of his personal time to the church. And one of the things that he does is he preaches, uh, almost every weekend not not every weekend but almost every weekend or he's doing something for the church every weekend and he has had a huge influence on those around him i have been back home and spent time with lance we'd go out to eat or something and some of his friends would be around and they completely change their demeanor and everything else around him because they know his christian uh it's not the it? hat intimidating <laughs> it's not that part <laughs> Now I will say this. I like the way you can rock it. He, he looks like Indiana Jones. Right Speaking now. of that, Lance is a, I believe if I'm correct, a second degree black belt in karate and taekwondo. So, <laughs> oh wow! Now, now you do uh, that stuff too. I'm right? a first degree black belt. Yes. So, Lance, can you beat Troy? Uh, no, no, <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Well, it's great to have you on the show tonight. One of the things we wanted to talk to you about is the importance of the influence of a Christian outside the walls of the building. Uh, because, I mean, you go uh, – to, to make sure I, I don't misrepresent. You're in the oil fields, is that correct? Yes, sir. And typically, if you think about oil fields, you think of um, – and I may be wrong. They're called roughnecks, aren't they? Roughnecks. And that's what most people think. They think – and that's – uh, really a floor handle drilling rig with a rough neck. But that's what most people call it. And they are very rough and they are, they talk rough, they act rough. And, and so that's probably why they have that, that reputation. And so growing up and basically how many years now have you been working in the oil field, Lance? Well, I started 15 years old. I was wrenching rods. And then I did other things, but I got into it full time in, I guess it was 93. So that's, you know, I don't know how many years. I've been with Devin for 21 years, almost 30 years in the oil field total. Is it a challenge then? And, uh, you know, what's your experience of trying to let your Christian light shine in, in the workplace as you go out there? When I first started, of course, the, I really think one of the prerequisites to be in the oil field is you have to cuss better than a sailor because <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. They, the, the language is horrendous. And so, you know, I'm, you don't know my background, but I left the church, came back. I was that lost child, that lost son that kind of wandered in the wilderness for too long. But when I come back, I'm really trying to, to be the kind of Christian that I, I want to be. And I found out real quick that it's kind of hard to do in the old field. Oh yeah. It's, you know, you, it can be done. And, and so that was, it's very difficult, but it can be done. You know, uh, I don't know how much Troy's told you about me or through watching the program. I, I was in law enforcement while preaching. Now I, I've said that about law enforcement, that it can be hard and, and I'm not trying to go against police or anything like that, but it, it tends to have rough language. You get exposed to a lot of things. And I was blessed that they saw me first as a chaplain before I became an officer. 
and they knew me as a preacher. And, and so there were a lot of people that would curb that behavior around me to some degree. But it, but it's a challenge when you're out there. It is. And, and, you know, my problem was a lot of the people that I worked with, they saw me when I was in that lost country, when I was in that far country, they saw me the kind of life that I lived. And, and then and I, I think I was 30 years old whenever I finally came back to the church and, and recognized that I was lost. And from that point on, trying to live the kind of life that I needed to live and, you know, be the influence that I needed to be, it, it was very difficult. But I, you know, I, I just, I recognized something. I recognized that I might be the only person that they ever see or, or talk to that might be able to share the gospel with them or even preach to them. And I didn't preach to them in the sense of, you know, sitting down with them and said, let's talk about Jesus. I had to live it. I had to show it by my actions, by my words, you know, just as simple as going out to eat, you know, you go out to eat and you sit down with a bunch of guys and they're talking and, and they just start eating. And I would say, Hey guys, let, let's, let's ask God to bless our food. You know, let's, let's ask a blessing on the food. And they just kind of look at you like, okay. And then they stop. And it's at that point that that conversation gets started. Oh, wow. Did you ever have any bad experiences when you tried something like that? No, you know, you know, God, I, I gotta say, I don't know that I've ever had anybody say, no, I don't think I want to do that. Oh, wow. But, you know, almost everybody respects you. And, and that's the one thing I can say about the oil and gas industry. They're a family and, and, you know, they look after each other. And even though they're harsh, even though they're, they have a bad reputation, really good people, good hearted people. And that's why I found it, it was important for me to be like Christ. If I could be like him and show them what it's like, then maybe I could change their life. Exactly. And, and I want to be careful. I don't want to say that, you know, no more than I would like all, um, police officers, uh, no more than I would say, I want to represent all, um, you know, oil field people being, being rough and tough, you know, but there's stereotypes and, and, and I think it's awesome because I know there's some people that tune into our live stream because they're out there in the oil fields and they can't worship somewhere and they're, they're taking that opportunity and, one of the problems I believe we have, and I actually had one of our instructors talk to me about this tonight, is that, that we're not taking the gospel in our lives outside the walls of the church building. So if you're going to advise people how to do that, what recommendations would you would you give them? Well, it, it's funny that you said that because I just, I just actually did a lesson on this, and I, I, I tell them to pause. I tell them to pause, and I want you to think about the words that you're about to say. I want you to recognize that everybody watches you, even when you think they're not watching. They're watching, and they're listening to you. And especially if they find out that you're a Christian, oh, man, they watch you like a hawk because, you know, they want to throw you under the bus. They will well, see, look what Lance just did. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, it's you let God take control. And I think that's the biggest key. You've got to trust him. He's going to walk with you. He's going to take you. He's going to guide you, but you've got to allow him to do it. And, you know, does that mean that you're going to be perfect? Nope. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. And I can tell you that I, you know, I lost, I've lost my temper on location before and guys kind of look at me and, and, and I would talk to him about it and we would talk and have good solid conversations about, you know, what it means to, to struggle, what it means to, to suffer, because that's, that's what we're, look at what we're living in now. Oh yeah. I mean, did you ever think we would live in a time where uh, people would, you know, wear masks whenever they go into a bank? (laughs) Yeah. Normally that would be illegal. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And yet here we are. And so it's very difficult, but, you got to just trust that God's going to, he's going to give you the words. He's going to walk with you and you're going to stumble. And when you do, you you dust off your britches and you get up and you step out there and you, you step forward and you do it again. And and this time you don't, you don't stumble. 
And what I'm hearing you say is that you got to be real with people, be mm-hmm. who you are. There you go. And what I'll, I'll need to, I guess, bring a few scriptures in here. Everything you're saying is biblical. Um, you know, the, I think about the condemnation that Jesus gave to the hypocrites, which was the idea of being a stage actor. He talked about the whited sepulchers, the idea of whitewashing the tombs. Uh, when the reality is what God wants is service out of a pure heart. He even wants us in the passage that came to my mind when you're talking about that. Okay. You lost your temper. You know, I'd love to say I'm perfect, but I'm not. And, um, a passage, I don't know. We do enough in the church, but it sounds like it's exactly what you did. Uh, not necessarily the church, but to those around you is you confessed your faults one to another. You, you owned it, you acknowledged it and you let people see that you're a real person. I, I think when we do that, we're going to be more effective at pe- bringing people to Jesus. You're right, guy. I mean, that's, that's the whole reason why I started preaching because in, I wanted people to know look, what, what happens whenever people walk into a congregation and walk into a building, they think, well, here's this guy preaching. He's perfect. He's done everything. You know, he, he doesn't ever make a mistake. And yet we are, I mean, I, I have to be the same person in that pulpit as I am out there on a, in a frack band. I, I know y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but you know, or, or, you know, on a workover rig or a drilling rig, I got to be the same person. And mm-hmm. I want people, I wanted people to see that. And so I thought, you know what? The best way to reach people is to live it and to speak it. And so that's what I try to do. Now I see, uh, you know, you would be what I would call a bivocational preacher. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I saw Tristan Rowell on here, uh, Kate Summers on here, you know, Kate works, uh, teaching school. And, and, and let me say, uh, I, I'm thinking about several people watching this program. You know, we have factory workers that are on here tonight in manufacturing places. We have people that go to teach school. We have people that are going to construction places. I mean, we have a, a wide range of people and the things that you just talked about, they're facing where they are as well. So I, I appreciate you doing that, but, um, we have at least, you know, I was in law enforcement and preaching while uh, Tristan Rouse preaching and is in, I, well, it used to be an accountant. Now it's kind of construction stuff. Uh, Kate teaches, uh, the bivocational preacher is very important. Um, what advantages do you think you have as a bivocational preacher versus only being dedicated full time to preaching? So, of course, a lot of a lot of the congregations that I preach at gotten they don't have a, they don't have a full time ministry. Uh, a lot of times they're very small congregations. They don't have elders. Um, they might have at one time, but they they've either passed on or they've gotten to the point where they just don't have anybody that has stepped into that that particular office or I mean that that um, duty. And so one of the advantages I have is that I get to meet a lot of people. I get to meet a lot of people and I get to share with a lot of people. And, and I've made so many friends. I've, I've preached in California at several uh, churches out there. I've preached in, in Arkansas, Oklahoma, here in Texas. And, and what I find is, is that there are so many people out there that love God and want to want to serve him but you know sometimes don't even recognize or realize that they fall into a rut Mm -hmm. and so i I get to i get to kind of ruffle their feathers a little bit i get to kind of push them a different direction and and you know it's 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 a blessing to me because i i have to be careful um you know that i don't mislead somebody but i i just simply try to i try to take that Take that opportunity. I don't have. I don't have to go and see the. I'm not seeing the same people each and every day. So it, it it is a blessing. Of course, I do have other responsibilities with our local congregation because we're a small congregation of you know 20, 30 people, and and my dad and I are pretty much the the teachers there. So yeah. I have spent a lot of time there too. Well, one thing I'm going to say is my wife just texted me and said, the way you said share was Troy all over. <laughs> I don't know if y'all picked up on that as brothers, but my, my wife, uh, says we have several words that come out exactly the same. And, and you notice that I, Lance, you should be proud of me. 
I said oil field instead of all field because that's the oil Texas. Field. <laughs> giveaway whenever we're from texas we say oil and gas and well, what is oil? Yeah, far <laughs> but i think um going back to this though is that one of the things i found out when because i was dedicated fully to preaching and then uh i started being a bivocational preacher providing and and working a full-time job it made me understand people more mm-hmm. it made me more compassionate Yes. more understanding because i think sometimes when you're a full-time preacher you're like well why aren't these people doing more and you don't understand you're not really thinking about well they're putting 40 hours a week in sometimes 50 then they're going home and then they're trying to worship and so every time the preacher plans another activity that's just another hour that they they're having to you know and it's easy when you're, you're able to dedicate it full time right. and so i think it brought some balance and some understanding to me I, and it and it does me as well because you can you know I, and it's I see that and I see that with a lot of different congregations that I go to where you've got everybody there or you know they're either they're full time working I mean they're working full time or or you know they have other obligations and so they can't spend the time that is needed to be able to study and to to bring a lesson and I commend those men that step up and. You know, especially these small congregations where they're the only ones that can really uh, bring a, a lesson. So they, it forces them to do that. And, and then that, in turn, makes them realize the importance of spending time in the Word. And to me, going back to one of the things that you were saying, uh, we were talking about earlier, what bothers me more than anything is that people... They don't, they haven't read the Bible. I know. Read it from cover to cover. And how can you possibly know what God wants if you don't read it from cover to cover? Take the time to read it and to really, you know, and and here's the thing. You get to the end, don't stop there. Go back to the beginning and go through it again. And and you're going to learn and see things that you didn't see before. And we sometimes get caught up in our studies. We sometimes get caught up in, other things and we forget that we need to spend time with god it's you spend time with your wife you need to spend time with god that's how you build a relationship you know can you imagine uh lance because i know how to talk to a cop a police officer and relate to them because i've had similar experiences so if you if i go into an area and all of a sudden you say all right guys i want you to go and try and teach these people about god's word there are some things i know to avoid and some ways to say things and now if you say, all right, you're going to go to the oil field and be a missionary, uh, I would have a learning curve. And, and that would be true of a factory, uh, of a school, of a military, you know, any aspect of that. So just imagine if we took a mentality of creating preachers of all of our men in the congregation. What what effect do you think that would have? Oh, man. Uh, you know, that you're – it would be tremendous. It, 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 so here, here's here's something I was just sitting here thinking about. I, I remember sitting in. I don't. I remember sitting in a restaurant one time with some guys, and we were just talking shop. And the waitress come over there, and she looked at me, and she said, "Where do y'all work?" And we told her we work in the oil and gas industry. And, and it's because of the lingo. It's because of the words that we use. Uh, the, you know, I'm sure as a, as the, as a police officer in, in, in the. Um, uh, that, well, we, that we had office. uniforms on. The, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, the badges we, gave us away when we were in the restaurant. <laughs> we, 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 when you start using language, you know, we use acronyms. Everybody uses acronyms. Oh, yeah or things like that well, whenever you're in when you're in a conversation with somebody if you can't talk to them on their level they're not going to listen to you they're going to shut you off and so if you take joe and bill and 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 jim who are factory workers construction workers you know oil field workers and, and you teach them and equip them now they go and they talk to those guys they can re- that they can relate with you're spreading the gospel, which is exactly what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to spread the word. Amen. 
you know, uh, isn't that what Jesus did in his teachings, that he would be there and he would take something that was around him and would relate it to him? And, and I, I remember one time uh, our, our thing is that we would end up in a truck stop normally around 2 to 4 a.m. if things started slowing down on the night shift and we'd go as a uh, – our county, we'd have four deputies out at a time, and we'd the four of us would go sit down. We'd try and catch a bite to eat. We'd be talking, and a lot of times, because I would talk about religious things, they would say. And, and my favorite thing: Do you ever get this? Hey, you're a preacher. Let me ask you this. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, I mean, and that's normally what started. I tell people I would have Bible studies almost every morning with a group of guys uh, that they'd say. Well, you're a preacher. Let me ask you this. And it may be related to the home. It may be related to the church. It might be about their, and I we use air quotes here, tithing, it, it, you know, but they would ask me stuff. And oftentimes I would relate it to things that we would see that, that they would know. And I, and I'm sure you do the same thing. And as you're trying to explain it to them. Absolutely. And you know, you're, you're spot on. That's exactly how Jesus taught. And that's how people relate. People understand if you can, if I can talk to some, somebody that is, uh, you know, in, in their field and it's their language that they understand, they're going to get it. And whenever I preach, whenever I'm teaching, I do the same thing. In fact, I, I got tickled because when we went to Paraguay, I remember Troy looking at me and saying, now, if you use an analogy, Lance, they're not going to necessarily understand what you're talking about because it's a different country. And so I had to, you know, had to revise the way that I taught because you need to be able to relate to the people. And if you can't relate to them, they're going to tune you out. I got you. I got you. Well, look, uh, it's been great having you on. We're running a little short. Sorry about the mix up on there. Anything you want to add before we uh, go to our information break? I just want to say thank you to all of you because what you're doing is fantastic. And the fact that you're giving everybody an opportunity to learn the word, to get the answers to some of those tough questions and some questions that we get hit each and every day. So God bless you guys. I really appreciate you having me on and giving me an opportunity to spend a few moments with you. Man. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I want to get you on again sometime in the future. Uh, I'll, I know, I know your family, so we'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> yeah, good guy. Nice talking to you guys. 